What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of... Inconsistencies, Inconsistencies, FNAF has many inconsistencies. And I'm ready for the never running fire. I didn't realise this at first, but today we're talking about the fact that in the Fazbear Frights universe, William just explodes with no explanation, but also later becomes Springtrap and ruins Hudson's day. <laughs> I don't know about you. But uh, if you explode, you no longer exist. And if you no longer exist, then how are you going to become a spring trap? <laughs> Inconsistencies! We're going to have a small discussion about this today because I've seen it floating around a lot and I really want to um, project my thoughts on it. <laughs> uh, including the existence uh, of an entirely new FNAF universe. Um, so that's kind of exciting. This all feels like the plot of Loki so far, <laughs> with the sacred timelines and stuff. It's, it's funny, it's funny. Are you taking me somewhere to kill me? Speaking of timelines, did you know that there's only a week left uh, of June and if you don't subscribe uh, and get me to 10k by the end of June, then you're never gonna see a timeline from me. Actually, that's probably untrue. Come on, we are so close. Literally, if you have not subscribed yet, then just do it. Uh, it takes three seconds, and I bet you can't press it with your nose. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty difficult if you don't have a touch screen. I love making these Fazbear Fright videos for you, and if you guys love them as much as I love making them, then make sure you don't forget to give it a fat like. Now, speaking of loving Fazbear Frights, one thing I adore about this series is the fact that it's all connected. I'm gonna make a video on the Stitch Race connections that exist, but to somewhat summarize, <clears throat> I don't have a tie on. The Stitch Race takes the girl scraps from To Be Beautiful, the plush trap chaser on the train track, which could have something to do with the fetus trap in, in the flesh, the Ella doll, and there's so much more. The Stitch Wraith collects loads of these agony infested items. And it's made of things like the battery from Fetch and the possessed doll from the real Jake. In the most recent epilogue, we get the Into the Pit Ball Pit, which also appears in Gumdrop Angel and in the same universe as Snack Space, an establishment that exists in Room for One More. <laughs> Almost every single story connects. Almost every story connects in some way, um, whether it's a very small connection like the snack space or if it's a direct story continuation. But as we've said, there's also inconsistencies. Uh, take this one, for example. Now, coming home is all about Susie, who we all know to be a victim of the missing children's incident, which must take place at least before 1987. So tell me why there are flat screen TVs. This leads some theorists to believe this takes place after 1987, creating a plot hole. Now, I don't agree with this. Uh, I don't ag agree with this inconsistency at all. Uh, it's a theory people have been talking about in my G Discord, which is in the description below. Go, 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 I was gonna say subscribe, but go join. Firstly, flat screen TVs started appearing around 1964 anyway. <laughs> so that's not really an issue. Secondly, this is a fictional world, uh, and I personally don't really feel comfortable with taking real-life dates and putting them into the universe without any real explanation as to why we should do that. For all we know, flat-screen TVs could have been around way before the 1960s. Thirdly, this is by far not enough evidence to hold this modern MCI theory up. Don't get me wrong, it is interesting, and it could be true, but I don't see enough evidence yet for this conclusion. Now let's say that the missing children's incident and coming home does happen in the mid 1980s. We still have the issue of why does coming home even matter? It doesn't connect to the Stitch Raid story all that much. It doesn't tell us much about how things work in this universe. It really is just there. And there's a few stories like this that don't really seem to fit in. Again, we will talk about all of this in a separate video. But what I really want to talk to you about today is one of the biggest inconsistencies that these books create for us. And uh, I tell you, you're not gonna like it. Let's continue from information we've talked a lot about in previous videos. The story, what we found, is all about a night guard Hudson at Fazbear Frights, uh, and then this spring trap gets imported, uh, and he essentially hallucinates him to his death. We've talked a lot about the implications of this story and what it's got to do with agony and stuff like that. 
But what we don't talk about all that much is the fact that Springtrap is present in the story. And this is a huge concern. To understand why this is very concerning, let's go all the way back to the story The Man in Room 1280 or 1280 or however you want to say it. You can say it however you want to say it. Just don't blame me for saying the wrong one. This is personally one of my favourite stories. A priest named Arthur uh, gets called to Heracles Hospital to see the man in room 1280, uh, who is very clearly William Afton himself. Um, the man is a corpse being held alive by two souls fighting over control, much like the law of Ultima Custom Night. Arthur finds out that he wants to go to the Fazbear Entertainment Distribution Centre, so Arthur gains permission from the hospital uh, and then takes Afton, where he explodes all of his agony onto all the shelving units uh, and finally dies. You're probably thinking, yeah, very cool story explaining Ultimate Custom Night, but the more you look into it, the more things you start to see are completely out of place. Now this story is presumably the thing that starts off the epilogues. Agony of Andrew infecting thousands of items in this place. But if that's the case, this story would have to take place after 2023 and the fire and pizzeria simulator. This story even mentions burns on his body from years ago. Except this story takes place before 1995. Why? Well, Sergio's Lucky Day takes place in 1995 and stars an agony-induced balloon boy called Lucky Boy. How can Lucky Boy be cursed like this unless it comes after the man in room 1280 where it all starts? Inconsistencies! This was at first uh, difficult for me to grasp my hands on. But for anybody who isn't crazy in the in the theory game, uh, to put it simply, Ultimate Custom Night in the games takes place after the events of Pizzeria Simulator in 2023. However, in the Fazbear Fright stories, it takes place before 1995. That's a, that's a pretty big gap. <laughs> this is quite a big problem because Afton explodes in the story, but we know that that doesn't happen in the game's universe. He kills a few children, then becomes Springtrap, left to burn. And this is what I would like to call the Springtrap Dilemma. Let's single out the man in room 1280 and look at its individual uh, implications. In the story, the souls aren't letting him rest, just like Golden Freddy in Ultimate Custom Night. He convinces Arthur to take him to the distribution center, only as soon as he gets there, he just explodes. So what was his plan, and why did he want to go to the distribution center in the first place? Well, my friends, this was his plan. Afton knew that self-destruction would lead to firstly, the end of his suffering, and secondly, a lot of agony spillage. Agony that would infest many items to be distributed all around from the distribution center. Heck, this could even have led into the events of FNAF VR as part of Afton could have infused the parts that eventually made up the VR game. It could have led to the corruption we see in FNAF AR. The fact that Fazbear Entertainment are sending out spring traps to people's houses. They wouldn't do that. Well, actually, it's Fazbear Entertainment. They probably did do that. This story has a direct uh, connection with the link between Ultimate Custom Night and FNAF VR and AR. Uh, but at the same time, it's also the starting point for the Fazbear Frights timeline. If this story slotted somewhere nicely in after the year 2023, I would be very content and none of this would be a problem. Springtrap will have been imported to Fazbear Frights, like in what we found, uh, burned in Pizzeria Simulator, gotten tormented by Golden Freddy in Ultimate Custom Night, and exploded in the man in room 1280. Then formed the beginning of a whole new era of FNAF. But instead this story takes place around the same time as FNAF 1. And that infuriates me. Inconsistencies! Are you gonna cut away or? So what if this story did actually take place after FNAF 6? Which is a big ask. In my opinion, I think that this story has huge parallels, and I mean huge. I just wish that the dates lined up. If this was in the 2020s, then stories that take place before it would have to be explained by something else. 
and I don't know what that would be. Let's say we were right about the date. How do we explain yet another return of Afton? And why does he have burn marks before any fire even happens? My friends, this truly is a dilemma and one that I think but hate to say brings back the idea of parallel universes in the franchise. In the Fazbear Fright series, we all began by believing this would be similar to the trilogy in which it was not all in the same continuity. And I think a lot of the stories are there just to be parallels to the games. But then we saw the name Afton. And we saw Susie. And we saw so many events that lined up to the main game series that we thought it was all in the same continuity. Remember, these stories are ways for us to polish the timeline uh, and to explain how the world of Freddy's works. But now, now I'm starting to have doubts. I believe the Fazbear Frights universe and the game universe work very similarly uh, in terms of the mechanics, uh, but I don't think that they are one in the same. I really hate saying this because I'd love it to all be in the same continuity. It breaks my heart that it probably isn't. I just don't think that just because there's an Afton in both universes that they are identical. Remember, most of the stories are just parallels and seeing a name or a date doesn't necessarily mean that that is the name or that is the date. When Into the Pit came out, uh, we can all admit we all thought it was evidence for the missing children's incident being in 1985. But now it's a weak theory. Our two Golden Freddy souls for Golden Duo in the games are Cassidy and the Crying Child, while we have Jake and Andrew in these books. Sure, they make really good parallels for Cassidy and the Crying Child, but that doesn't mean that they are the same. Speaking of the Crying Child, that doesn't mean his name is Evan 100%. Very well could be, but taking names that we only see in the books and characters that we only see in the games and putting them together doesn't make much sense. So I'd like to hear what you guys think about uh, the power of the universe I hit idea and the whole Springtrap dilemma. Uh, it's interesting to think about with the purple hand we all assume to be Afton uh, in Security Breach. Are there multiple universes uh, between the books and the games or is there one sacred timeline uh, that we haven't thought of yet? Make sure you tell me your thoughts uh, and uh, you subscribe because we are super duper close to 10,000 now, um, so yeah, thank you for subscribing so much, I really do appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.